calm down take a deep breath let's talk about it so the typescript wizard himself matt pocock made a video called don't use return types unless dot 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 and apparently this was a controversial topic as usual i have a lot of thoughts i'm going to talk about those first of all if you haven't watched matt's video go and watch that first you can pause this here go and watch that and then come back here i'll wait so the essence of the whole uh, controversy or debate whatever you want to call it is that when you write a typescript function you have two choices the first is that you can explicitly type the return object the explicit typing means now you are forced to return that same object and here when you call that function you will see that the variable or the returned value is of that type which you defined up here the second option is to just not do that and let typescript inference take over now if you hover on it you'll see that it's an object with id string email string perms array of string and it can infer those types based on these return this return statement so typescript can look at what you're returning from a function and infer that that should be the type of the return value this typescript inference is really powerful it allows you to just write javascript as usual almost as usual and not have to worry about any extra type definitions or type assignments or annotation whatever you want to call it and you can just do stuff for example i can add name here some name and i can use it here user.name and we're done let's add brackets inside here i was just able to do that without having to add this property in an interface or in a type somewhere because typescript can infer that the user now has the name of string type if i want to change this to full name let's say like that typescript will complain now because it knows that name is no longer a property i can also just go in here and use the refactor tool i can do that and typescript will change it for me everywhere where it's used you can see that inference is pretty powerful and most of the time you should be using inference for your code so one other way to look at this is that the type definition of the return object is coupled to the implementation of the function coupling is a pretty straightforward concept you can think of two things being coupled to each other if a change in one thing requires a change in the other thing if you have to change both those things together or even if they get automatically changed together those two things are coupled to each other let me show you what i mean by an example or by a diagram so here are our two functions the get user details and the user details component they are coupled to each other or more specifically the user details component is coupled to the get user details function which means if i change how this function returns data i'll have to make some changes to the component as well now while coupling is a pretty straightforward concept decoupling things can sometimes get tricky if we want to decouple these two things or these two functions all we have to do is to pull them apart and get rid of this arrow good news these two functions are no longer coupled you can change them independently as much as you want bad news the two functions don't talk to each other so now the user details component has no way of getting the user details to show it on the screen so of course you can decouple everything in your code by having nothing talk to anything else but then your code will not be useful because nothing talks to something else so the way to solve coupling is to create a new thing in between like that let's give it a blue color and let's call this a contract your user details component can couple to the contract and your get user details can also be coupled to the contract now you might be asking what did i just do here didn't i make problems worse by didn't i make problems worse before there were two things coupled to each other now there are three things coupled to each other and this is where another concept has to be introduced which is stability now we talked about coupling and how it's about changing things stability is how frequently something changes over time now you can imagine the user details component being relatively unstable because we are always improving the ui we're always improving how data is displayed or how things are rendered things like that or we might even be jumping from frameworks the point is that components like these can get can tend to be unstable because we change our uis quite a bit 
Same thing here, by the way. We might have to change what the user details uh, object shape or data type is. We might have to change how it's fetched from the backend or from the database or wherever it's coming from. We might have to add validation rules in between. Basically, both of these things are going to change quite a bit. The contract here though, you can make the contract very stable. What that means is that because both of these things are coupled to the contract, they are effectively decoupled from each other because a change in this function will not require a change in this function anymore because this component is no longer coupled to the function, it's coupled to the contract, which doesn't change. Now you can probably see where I'm going with this. In TypeScript, one of the ways to create contracts is to just add a return type. Now the contract is that this function will always return user type and we can look at the user type here. It says id email prints, which means no full name. We'll have to remove that, which means we can remove it from here. But we only have to change both of these things if this contract changes. So we can add full name in here. Let's make this non-optional so that we can pass in full name here and everything now works. Now it doesn't matter how much you change this function, as long as you're following this contract, you're fine. So if you accidentally get a name from somewhere, uh, let's say this comes from database somehow, and if you pass in the name here, TypeScript will yell at you because you're not following the contract. This is not the same type as the user type. So you have to ensure that you make it full name and not just name and everything else works. And you don't have to change anything in here. Whereas if you didn't have this contract, if you didn't have this here, and if you change this to name, you now also have to go into this function and change this to name. And you can imagine that this might, this can get difficult the more components you have and the more functions you have. Everything is coupled to each other. One thing breaks and everything else will also break in compile step. But you can also probably see some problems with this. Let's go back to the diagram for that. It is true that before we came up with the contract, things were relatively simple. We just had two functions, one calls the other, and that's it. Now when the contract comes into the picture, let's zoom out a bit so you can see it, things got slightly more complicated. Now you have three things, you have some extra overhead, you have to come up with the contract, you have to make sure both of them are using that contract, things like that. So this is definitely more complex than this. So for the cost of decoupling, you're adding some extra overhead of creating that contract. But what you might also notice is that if these functions start to get big, suddenly this small contract is not scary anymore. In fact, it's a pretty small overhead and it will bring you a lot of benefits. Let's go back here and make these functions also big. Now, because these functions are coupled to each other, they're actually pretty close. Anytime you're working on this, you kind of have to take both of these into account. You cannot work on them independently. You cannot confidently make changes in the get user details and expect to not have to make changes in the component because they're coupled to each other. Like I showed here, if you change this from name to full name, you also have to change that in other places. In the other scenario, you can work on the two things independently as long as you have the contract in mind. So you can work on the get user details by itself and as long as it adheres to the contract, everything is fine. And then another person can work on the user details component or you can work on it at a different time. And as long as you have the contract there, you never have to go back and work on the get user details function because you're just using the contract. You're decoupled from the function. You don't care how the function is implemented as long as the contract is there. This is the power that decoupling gives us, but it's really only useful when the overhead is worth it. When the other functions, when the things that you are decoupling are complex enough that they need to be decoupled. Another advantage of having contracts like these is that when you're working on new functionality, let's say that I'm writing a new function that does something. What I can do is that I can come up with the contract first. So I don't even start with the function. I start with the contract. Once I have the contract, that's when I develop my this function that does whatever job it needs to do. This way, 
I am thinking of the component or how this function is going to be used before writing the implementation for it. Usually what we do is that we just jump into implementing whatever we are doing, whatever we are writing, and how it's going to be used by other code or by other people is an afterthought. And again, it doesn't really matter most of the times if the code base is small enough, if it's a small team working on all of the code base, it's just going to be us using that code in the future. But when you want that level of decoupling between things, this becomes really useful. The biggest place where you will see this kind of decoupling is with library functions. So a library function, most of the time they will try to come up with a contract first and then an implementation. And you can use that library however you want. And when you do that, you're coupling to their contract, not to their implementation. This allows them to keep iterating and keep experimenting with how something is implemented. And as long as the contract is adhered to, you don't have to make any changes in your code to accommodate the new changes in the library. It also works the other way around. The library doesn't have to care about how exactly you're going to use it. They just have to give you the contract and that's it. And obviously this is also useful for larger complex projects where you might break things into smaller pieces that independent teams can work on. So these things are really useful with vertical slice architectures or microservices, or if you just put a project in the monorepo, you can put it in different packages that are decoupled from each other. And the best way to achieve that decoupling in TypeScript is by adding explicit type definitions so that you don't run into these problems and you always have a strong contract to fall back to. We talked about why most of the time you should be using inference and when you want to decouple things, you should be using explicit return types. Now, inference is also not all powerful. Unfortunately, TypeScript is still built on top of JavaScript where you are allowed to do whatever you want and TypeScript kind of has to deal with it, which means inference might run into some issues. In this case, it might run into issues with branching. So this is another version of the same function but this time we are specifying a role. And based on the role, it can return either an admin object that only has an ID and role, or it can return a user object which also has an email and an array of permissions. Now, if we look at the component here, you'll see that TypeScript is complaining here that perms can be undefined. Even though we are explicitly telling the function that we want a user object, and in the function you can see that if it's a user case, then it will return the perms array. It's not, it's not undefined, it's there. TypeScript still isn't smart enough to know that it's only going to be a user object. You can see here that the return type is a union of both structures, admin and role, or admin and user. What that means is that you either have to add a question mark here, which basically means that you're not strongly typed anymore. Weak typing is kind of like a cancer in a strongly typed world. So the other option here is just to do runtime checking. Can explicitly defined contracts fix this problem? Kind of, yeah. So here in this situation, we can figure out a contract where if it's a user role, it's going to return a user type. If it's an admin role, it's going to return an admin type. The way you can do this in TypeScript is by overloading. Let me show you how it looked like. So we can say export function, get user details. The ID is going to be a string, but the role is going to be an admin, not a user, just an admin. And it's going to return admin. We can do this again, export function, or we can let copilot do it again. There we go. This is how overloading works in TypeScript. You can define multiple different signatures for the same function and TypeScript will pick the best signature that fits when you call it. So if you hover over user now, we can see that it's only the user type and not the admin type, which means if we remove this runtime check, TypeScript doesn't complain anymore because this is only a user type. It cannot be an admin type because we specified user here. If we change this to admin, both of these are going to fail because admins don't have email and perms. If you hover over this, you'll see that this is an admin. So this is our new contract for this function. And we don't have to do any extra work here when we're using the function because we just adhere to the contract that's going to be either user type or an admin type. We don't have to do any extra validation 
or runtime type checking. Once again, this is very useful if you want to decouple these two things from each other. If you want to work on the get user details first, you want to make sure the contract is there, you want to get the implementation right, and then the next day when you start working on the component, you don't have to do any extra work. You just call it and you render the data. That's it. That's not to say that this approach is perfect. Because once again, inference has its limits. This does complicate how we write this function now. Now, there are some things TypeScript can do. For example, here, if we say that we are also going to allow perms and it's going to be an array, let's put an empty string in there, TypeScript will complain. It will tell us that this overload is not compatible with the signature or with the implementation. Because when it's an admin, we are returning an object with the perms array. However, here, it's not expecting that. It's expecting it to be ID and role. That's it. It's not expecting a perms here. So if we remove it, TypeScript is happy. Now let's try this the other way around. Let's try to remove perms from the user object. It passes. TypeScript doesn't complain because it's somehow not strong enough or not smart enough to figure out that this overload also exists and we should be required to put a perms here. Even though here in the user type, it's a requirement that there should be a perms, TypeScript will let it pass even if it's not there. When inference hits its limits, you have to do some runtime type checking. The only question is, do you want to not bother with decoupling and just do that when you call the function? Or do you want to decouple the function implementation from how it's used by using this contract in which case you will have to do runtime checking here or some sort of checking at least. So after all of that, it really only comes down to one or two basic concepts. Do you want to decouple parts of your application from each other, develop them independently, and uh, when you're working on some code, you want to think about how this code is being used by someone else. If you want to achieve that kind of decoupling, you should go for explicit return typing. Now, if you don't want to bother with that, if your code base is not that complex that you need decoupling, if it's just a small team working on all of the code base, then you don't necessarily need that decoupling. Then the contract is kind of some extra overhead. You can just get rid of it, rely on inference, and do that runtime type checking at the last point when you need to. It's really as simple as that. Do you want to decouple or do you not? Let me know if I missed anything. If there are more reasons to use or to not use explicit return types, let me know in the comments below and while you're there, please subscribe to the channel.